So maybe just to talk a little bit about uh, Vodacama, I think um, first and foremost, um, you know, our um, our purpose is really to ensure that we can connect for a better uh, for a better future, and in that respect, uh, we've always um, set out to make sure that every one of our customers in our markets has access to a cell phone. It's uh, it's a mission that we started 28 years ago and have continued with. Um, and uh, that has resulted in us creating prepaid for the world, uh, which we invented in 1996. And it is really born out of the dream of making it possible for every one of our customers to have access to telecommunications. Uh, built on that same dream, we now want to make sure that every customer across our footprint has access uh, to both financial services as well as uh, to, uh, uh, to, to broadband connectivity. Um, and in, in that regard, uh, we now have over 500 million customers or 500 million people in the different territories that we serve, um, uh, all the way up to, uh, to, to Egypt, and of course with Ethiopia being the latest to join, uh, uh, to, to come into, uh, into the group. How we're driving it out, our modus operandi has always been fewer markets, well-capitalized market leader in all the markets that we operate in. Um, and we strongly believe that uh, that's a key part of our strategy going forward. We also see the need to, to build out more fiber connectivity as well as 5G uh, connectivity into, um, into all our markets. Um, the way we try to achieve it, it, it increase in coverage is also through partnerships. We've come up with various innovative models and partnerships where we're looking to partner with various entities to try and grow the number of, uh, uh, of, of specific, specifically rural coverage towns that we're trying to reach. So at the moment, we have introduced a plan to connect the next 10,000 towns across our markets uh, and uh, specifically 10,000 rural towns that we're trying to drive outside our, outside our normal coverage um, uh, ambitions. Uh, this is a spe specific program to bring it to 10,000 new towns uh, that have not uh, uh, achieved 4G coverage previously. We see uh, this, uh, the technology is empowering, uh, of course, bringing people into the internet uh, and, 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 and really helping them to transform uh, their businesses. To that end, of course, we have, um, uh, you know, one, one of the big things that we're doing outside of coverage. So first part is increase the, the, the level of 4G coverage across our markets also increase the number of smartphones and, uh, and, um, and drive down the price of smartphones so that you can reduce the barrier to entry and increase the number of uh, customers taking up the service. The second part, of course, is once you've done that, is also to try and then help use the technology to empower people. So FinTech is a big part. We're the largest FinTech on the continent. We now move $25 billion a month through our platforms. Um, to put, to put that into perspective, M-Pesa uh, uh, and financial services in South Africa now has 64 million customers buying a financial service product from us. The $25 billion a month that we process is double the size of Square in the U.S. So that's how big uh, M-Pesa uh, is on the, uh, on the continent. We've also recently, uh, last week, um, soft launched our new super app. Uh, in South Africa, which is the first super app uh, on the continent. Um, and, um, and we'll be replicating that. That's in partnership with Alipay. It's uh, in the, um, uh, in the uh, iOS and, and Android store, so, so check it out. But what's important about it is, is, is that it's transforming or giving uh, SMEs the ability to transform their, their products and services. And, and the big impact of this service in China was that it allowed SMEs to sell their products uh, way beyond the geographical areas. We uh, are looking to do the same thing and therefore will give uh, hundreds of people, thousands of people, the ability to sell their products beyond their geographical areas. And I think that becomes quite exciting. Uh, and of course, coverage is extremely important uh, for this, specifically because uh, you know, the, uh, these uh, super apps really work on, uh, on, on access to data. So it's important that, you know, uh, that we have the coverage out there for people to take full advantage uh, of these services. 
through the services, there's also various lending options. We're building out both the merchant uh, side as well as the consumer part. There's consumer lending. Um, there's uh, ability to do nano loans and, and, and so on. And I think in Africa, that's extremely important because, you know, we um, in, in Africa, the context is if someone doesn't have food, they need to take a nano loan, which will buy them over until the next payday. Uh, and so these things become extremely important in terms of uh, being able to um, uh, give people access to uh, access to financial services. And so it's, a, it's empowering to a large degree. Today we have 450,000 SMEs that are connected to our MPESA platform. We have our own point of sale services. We do invoice financing. We, um, we have the biggest trading platform in South Africa called uh, Vote Trade. Where today we process over 250 billion rand of transactions. We're rolling that out across the continent. And this uh, platform allows uh, small companies the ability to buy directly from FMCGs. Uh, we're also providing loans, invoice financing, business advances. So it's this transformation and empowering uh, part that I think technology brings with it. Um, when it comes to 5G, we see a very important role for 5G. Uh, going forward. Um, we don't think it's about necessarily in Africa at this stage about, uh, you know, driverless cars and so on. What we think it's about is being able to provide through mobile a good alternative to, uh, to, to, to fiber. We're now happy that we've driven the cost down and, uh, and our bill cost down to such a degree that we can roll out 5G at a comparative price to what it would be to roll out uh, fiber to the home. So we do see um, a space for both, for both fiber, but also for 5G playing the big role of connecting homes and being able to, to provide unlimited type offerings uh, through a, a mobile network. And I think that's extremely important for us. So what we're doing at the moment um, is, is making sure that our networks are being readied for 5G um, launches across the continent. Of course, uh, as is tradition, we've made sure that we were the first operator across the continent to launch uh, 5G, as we've done with 2G, 3G, 4G, uh, and continue to do that uh, with 5G with uh, our launch in, in, in the suit a couple of years ago. Uh, and of course, we, we were first in South Africa. We're doing a number of trials across our markets to make sure that that um, modus operandi holds true and that we are preparing and investing quite heavily uh, into 5G going forward. We see a number of ecosystems that will be built around um, access to, 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 to 5G technology, uh, es especially because of the low latency. But I think one of the most important ones is being able to provide an unlimited type offering uh, on, a, uh, on, a, on a mobile network. Uh, uh, also important is how these technologies are, are playing a bigger role. We see that uh, both 4G and 5G can play a meaningful role in the transformation of remote uh, working, but also remote education and distance learning. And so we'll be investing into platforms that helps to drive that uptake as well. We're very proud of some of the platforms that we've built outside of MPESA and financial services in South Africa. Um, and today, uh, to, just to give an idea, we are the fifth largest insurer by profit in South Africa already. Um, and, um, you know, uh, we have 2.2 million customers buying uh, insurance uh, uh, products from, uh, from us. So, so, you know, we're building out more and more of these platforms and we've built out a very strong insurance platform that allows us to do nano insurance across the continent. Um, and we will be rolling that out uh, into all our markets. Another big platform that we built, which is uh, quite transformational, is our platforms that we built out uh, of a company that we own called Mezzanine um, and uh, operating out of Stellenbosch uh, in Cape Town. And, um, and uh, here we built very strong agricultural platforms. Uh, we specifically have two platforms called Connected Farmer and My Farm Web where essentially it allows us to basically take out the middlemen and use a digital platform to connect buyers directly to, uh, to, to farmers. 
Um, in in uh, Kenya, we've rolled out uh, um, a service called DigiFarm, where effectively we've taken female farmers and connected them directly uh, to buy. So these services will be rolled out uh, across the continent. Also very proud of our vaccine platform, which, um, which is being used for the rollout of vaccines in South Africa. And in partnership with uh, the, uh, the African Union, we've also made it available uh, across the continent. The stock solutions that we built for the distribution of uh, antiviral uh, medication has also been very successful, um, and we and, and that worked uh, also for mezzanine, and that allowed us to use that platform to repurpose it uh, for the vaccine distribution. That's used in a number of companies or, or countries across uh, across the continent. So we're very proud of the work that we're doing and the transformation we're making through our platforms. Also very important for us is a company that we own called IoT.next, where we're transforming IoT. Um, this was a little company um, that started out uh, in, uh, in South Africa that we invested into. We're now selling our services in California, in Germany, in the Netherlands, in the UK, and so on. Um, and um, it's become a nice unicorn uh, for us. Uh, but more importantly, it's helping us to, uh, in, in environmental uh, um, uh, goals and driving, uh, in achieving uh, our planet goals, specifically because we can reduce consumption in a building or a base station by as much as 20 to 30 percent using the power of IoT coupled with AI and machine learning. Uh, and this uh, platform that we built is becoming extremely popular, not just locally, uh, but internationally. And, it, and, and I think that's the importance of what technology can bring. It allows us to be able to transform lives, to make sure that we can drive both uh, inclusion through uh, through uh, access to to, to te tele telecommunications. We see ourselves as the sector of sectors where we need to be able to empower other sectors, and I think that's extremely uh, important. So, uh, and that's very much premised on us making sure that 4G coverage, 5G co coverage is available across uh, across the continents. I think where we do need help is firstly encouraging uh, uh, part parties, uh, OTT players and so on to partner with us in this journey of trying to connect um, you know uh, all of Africa and making sure that we can connect as many people as we can within the 500 million people that we cover today uh, across the continent. We have a target that by 2025, we want to increase our customer base by at least another 100 million uh, customers. So, so that's a clear uh, part of what we're trying to, to drive, but also increasing our financial services customers and making sure that we can, uh, we can reach at least 100 million people through our financial service uh, products and services. So I think, I think a very important goal for us. So you know, we encourage people to, to, to partner with us to help us with this goal of driving rural coverage. Um, and in here, we're inviting, of course, the, uh, the developmental funders, but also the OTT players and the manufacturers um, and anybody else who's, who's interested to help us with this transformation. We also uh, invite uh, different players to partner with us uh, in using our different platforms that we've created so that we can make a more uh, meaning uh, full difference in empowering for the future. Uh, and then lastly, I think to regulators, uh, a very important part and a very important plea is to get on with the allocation of spectrum. Spectrum is the lifeline uh, of a network. Um, spectrum is the, 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 the beginning of it all, where, where effectively, if you don't have access to spectrum, the ability to build 5G type services um, you know, become very difficult. So as regulators remove the impediments uh, and, and make it easier for, for, for telcos to, to be able to get access to the spectrum quickly. So one of the big things to drive 5G coverage is allocate the 5G spectrum early so that you know, we can be there and develop as the ecosystems are rolling out, as the devices are becoming cheaper, but we can use 5G very differently on the continent than what is going to be used in the rest of the world. For us, 
it can give us that broadband connectivity. It can help us to make sure that, you know, that we can reach every home in terms of being able to provide connectivity, and broadband connectivity within, uh, within those homes. So, you know, uh, it's an ecosystem. We all need to work together if we want to empower people to have access to, to the internet and really to take the full power, uh, the full advantage of, um, um, of, uh, of, of, of what the coverage and the capabilities of these technologies drive to, uh, provides to us and that the ecosystems that will grow um, around it. And finally, you know, let's create the developmental hubs in the continent, which can help us to drive up the uptake of these technologies on the one side, but also embrace uh, you know, the financial service platforms across the continent and you know, use it to, to, to the full extent of driving financial inclusion, helping people to sell their products, uh, creating marketplaces uh, on, the, uh, on the super app so that you, know, you can sell, people can sell their products um, uh, across the continent. That's how empower everyone for a better future. Thank you.